Hello everyone and welcome to the most difficult Spurverts of the season. I'm Rhys, I'm here with Emma and Craig as usual and this week we are going to be talking very, uh, very somberly about the Newcastle result, uh, Danny Rose's absence, uh, the social media silence for the first 24 hours after the game, uh, Harry Kane winning the golden boot, is that a silver lining? Uh, all five Spurs players in the England squad and the prospect of Slimani signing for us soon. So we'll kick it off, talk about the Newcastle result and all of the consequences of that. Emma, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Um, it's a bit like my uh, post-match interview that I did straight after the game outside James's Park. Check I don't, it out. I don't really, video. I don't really know what to say. Mm. I, I still, I mean, it's been nearly two days now, and I still, it was, it was an embarrassment, an utter disgrace. Yeah, that it was an abomination, wasn't it? A terrible performance. Uh, terrible performance against Southampton as well. Yeah, it's been but, a but, but the terrible performance against Southampton was nothing compared to what happened at St James's yeah. Park on Sunday. I mean, it was there was just nothing on the pitch. They just didn't care. They didn't want it. They didn't try. I mean, and I can't believe in my head that any professional footballer would go into a match thinking like that. But it was literally just like, oh well, do you know what? We can't win the league. Sod it. Can't be bothered anymore. Do you think that was definitely the case, Craig? Do you think they definitely thought? I oh, can't be bothered, or do you think they just they had nothing left? Their heads were gone. They're a disgrace. Every single one of those players on that field are a disgrace. That there's no other way to put it. The the level of performance they put in was disgraceful. Their attitude towards the game was disgraceful. Pochettino's comments before the game about not focusing on Arsenal was a disgrace to every single fan that has lived through this rivalry. Um, and that's just the perfect way to describe it: disgrace. Do you not think that Pochettino was trying to get that out of their heads so that it didn't become? Yeah, that's what he did, and but this is the consequence the of it. This is the consequence of it. He got that out of their heads. Isn't he saying we got bigger ambitions? Than, no, he's than saying just finishing above Arsenal. That's, doesn't it feel like Arsenal's only trophy every year or only victory every year is finishing above Spurs? And that's why all these pundits always say they've got to get that out of their heads because it, it's stopping them winning the league every year because all they give a shit about is finishing one place above where we are. So do you Whereas think? We've got do you ambitions. think? Do you, think, do you think they got that out of their heads? Do you think they got it out of their heads? Who? Our, the Spurs players. After Pochettino said that, do you think they got it out of their heads? Not then? at all, no. You Harry Kane kept it? talking about it. So you yeah, think Harry the reason we finished below... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you think the reason we finished below is because they didn't get that out of their heads? So you're saying if they didn't focus no, on that rivalry, we would have finished No, second. I think there's a number of factors for why we didn't finish below. I just think that... I don't necessarily think that it's a disgrace that Pochettino said that. I mean, he's a manager. He's a media-trained football manager. He's a professional. Well, I understand didn't say why that. he's saying that. Wenger, Wenger said didn't it, say anything. Yeah, no, Wenger said it would be good for us to finish above Spurs. Wenger said exactly. we're going to try and see what happens. Wenger addressed the situation. Wenger is trying to, frame, to, trying to frame that as success when it's been one of their least successful seasons but they, ever. But they still finish above us and it, and it that, happened I mean, again. They exactly. focused that's, on it and it happened again. Wenger's trying to keep his job, though. He knows it's been the biggest Wenger out campaign of for the last 10 years, probably. And he's doing a good career. job at it because but he's got another season with them. That is, you kind of hit the nail on the head about how difficult it is to deal with this. The fact it has been Arsenal's worst season probably for a decade. They have mm. been terrible for much of this season and yet they've still finished above us. Yeah, and we've and had our arguably best. our best season in years. Yeah, arguably. I say arguably because we only finished on 70 points, which is actually two points behind where we finished under AVB. Obviously, positionally and style but You have playing, to go by the position. You could, there's no point focusing okay, on the Okay, fine. All right. Then it's our best season, and yet we still finish below them. That's what it makes. It makes this so incredibly hard to stomach, and it makes it even harder to stomach the fact that it appears like our players and our manager didn't care about that, even when for us it means so much. And Harry, we talked about it in Spurs last week. Harry gets it. Obviously, he's a North London lad, born and bred. He's been at Spurs his whole career. He knows yeah. how much it means. And it didn't matter that Pochettino tried to play it down. He came right, right out straight afterwards and said, we know how devastating it would be if we don't finish above Arsenal. But it seems to me, judging by what happened on Sunday, that he's the only one that got it. Potentially, I don't know. I think players like Danny Rose probably get it. So where were they on... Well, actually, no, we'll Danny come Rose on Danny have, Rose. Danny Rose doesn't have Twitter. No, I was going to say, where were they on Sunday? But Danny Rose didn't play. Oh, we'll I see. Come on well, yeah, doesn't but have where Twitter were, or a match appearance. Where were well, they? Like if, if they? Where was that performance on Sunday? Where yeah, was I it? know, yeah. It's Sunday, where was the performance against Southampton? Yeah. Where I was know. the bottle against Chelsea? What happened against West Brom at home? This is yeah. four games. I agree. You can't I think, excuse this. Obviously, they were more gutted to uh, not win the league than they were about not finishing second and above Arsenal. But So they don't, they don't care about how much it means to the fans then? 
I don't know. They don't. Yeah, we, they we, don't. We don't, know. We don't Only know. Harry Kane cares. And that's because Harry Kane shows up in North London derbies and scores goals. Like Emma said, he's the only one that takes to it straight after the game to address the situation and tweet about things. He's the only one that fucking cares. He, he was supposedly an Arsenal fan, so he realises the rivalry between the fans. He's been there throughout the academy and he's come through the ranks. He gets it. And the rest of them don't get it. They don't care. Half of them are from Belgium. Yeah. The rest of them are just pricks. Like, I, I, honestly... If you're in, not Belgian, you're a prick. In, in my opinion, and Christian Eriksen, I've lost a lot of respect for that man because that man is so emotionless. He doesn't yeah, have anything to say. He's like a fucking robot. He's a Danish robot that just stands there and blinks his big eyelids and says a couple <laughs> things every time. He said, like, two-word answers after the game. Show some that, fucking passion, man. Well, maybe Seriously. the two-word answer shows that he's, he's too depressed. He's no, too well, that's him on a normal day. That is him. They've got nothing about them, these guys. There's no character. I think the only, the two most passionate players we have Bold. is Harry Kane. No, three. Harry Kane, Deli Ali, and Danny Rose. The rest of them, I don't know what they're on. They you don't, don't think the care. Chelsea, you don't think the Chelsea game I showed about, passion? I you don't think that showed say, passion? I can't go as far as that. I can be absolutely sure. But I don't think that was passion for the right reasons. I think it's passion because... Fellow professionals like Cesc Fabregas and Hazard came out and said something they wasn't really supposed to say and they were pissed off about it. That's what they were pissed off about. I don't think they were pissed off because of the rivalry. They don't care about the fans or what the it fans the do outside of no, the stadium. It, they weren't pissed off because of the rivalry. They were pissed off because of all those things that were said. But that's what they, they tried to say. They're now they tried not to go, win the league. They tried to say after the, the game, rivalry. it's a London derby. That's why our tempers got flared. Oh, stop fucking chatting shit. It wasn't about the London derby. I hate it when they try and come with that bullshit rhetoric all the time. It was a London derby. That's why we lost. No one cares about that. You definitely don't care about that, so don't lie. That's what they're doing, they're so lying. When, so when they don't say they care about it, that angers you. And when they do say they care about no, it, No, 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 that's not what it is. That's not what it is, don't do that. That's not what it is. These guys need to show that they really care about the On fans. The pitch. Yeah, exactly. Right. The, where's the performance? Where is it? That's it. Just talk for a performance. I don't want to hear anything else. Let your actions do the talking. But, but they're not is, doing that. But that is the thing. I can't go as far as you. I can be so angry and I'm still so angry and so miserable by what happened on Sunday in particular but what's happened over the last month but I can't say they've got no passion and they don't care because I it regardless of why if you don't agree with the fact they didn't care if they if they only cared because of what was said they didn't care because it was a London derby whatever but the fight and the spirit and the determination that they showed against Chelsea yeah I know we didn't get the result we wanted out of that but that performance on the on the pitch the level of feeling and the strength of anger like I came away from that game feeling really proud because I felt like even though we basically buggered this up at least they showed they really wanted it and yeah. they really cared in the end they wanted it too much and then they lost their heads and then we conceded the two goals See, I disagree I well. do not feel like that obviously right now after what happened on Sunday and also what happened against Southampton so it's like it's almost like for me it feels like a Jekyll and Hyde team I feel like the team that I have been so passionately excited about. He was proud of that performance about. against Chelsea. He was proud of that. Is that that's the word, proud. And I said at the time that I was. What, guys having a melee, one guy trying to scrape another guy's eye out. That's not, that's unprofessional. And it's, it just shows a lack of bottle. Like, I, I don't, why are you doing that? Just play your normal game that you've been playing all season, the performances we saw against Manchester City when we batted Stoke 4-0. Put these performances in and then that's cool. I don't want to see you lose your grip. Like, we're 2-0 up. Why is Lamella doing a 240 tackle because when we're 2-0 up? Their, they lost their heads because they are immature and inexperienced in this kind oh, of they're environment. They're grown men. They are grown they're adults. Grown How long are we going to do this them... immature... Hang on a minute. Marcus grown... Rashford can do it and he's at like 18 and he can keep his bottle. Hang on a minute though. You say they're yeah, grown men, most of them are younger than you. Huh? I said they're grown men, but most of them are younger than you. Yeah, exactly. But they're, they're still grown men. Now. But you... Come on, don't do that. Like, that's stupid. <laughs> no, but don't, don't do not do that because you were crying on camera outside Newcastle. Listen, we can be personal. We could do that, but don't do that. Like, there's no point. There's no point. Don't do that. What I'm trying to say to you is these players are grown adults. They're professionals. They've been playing football for a lot of their life. They know how to conduct themselves especially when it's on they bottled it they crumbled they haven't got character and that's it we can't make excuses for them say oh, I'm proud of that passion because it wasn't the right kind of passion the right kind of passion is put in a professional performance do your job on the pitch and th get the job done that's that's something to be proud of I I'm, nothing, I'm not proud about anything about that Chelsea performance I understand what you're saying I don't think it's fair to say they lack character when we spent a whole season saying what a characterful team this is uh, but I would make the case that I am not sure Hugo Lloris is the best captain that I we agree. could have in that team. I, I think agree. there's better candidates for the captaincy in that team. I think Harry Kane for one. Yeah. Harry Kane is first to grab the ball when we yeah, use I agree. The I put agree it back on the yeah. He's always given the talk before yeah. the game. I don't understand why Harry Kane isn't the captain. I understand it's about experience. He's got enough experience now to be yeah. the captain and lead the team. If he's the one with the passion, particularly about finishing above Arsenal, I don't see why he shouldn't be the captain. Yeah. When you look at 
I hate to say it, but when you look at teams like Chelsea, you've had John Terry as a mainstay captain for so long. John Terry is also able to get there and be in the ref's face when things happen. Yeah. Hugo Lloris cannot be running out of goal to get in the ref's face and talk about stuff, and he wouldn't anyway. But goalkeeper captains, it's yeah. too difficult to do that, and Terry does affect games by doing that. And it, I think it is. I think you just hit the nail on the head there. I think goalkeeper captains are a really, it's a really difficult yeah. thing yeah. to be. <laughs> Especially someone who's not vocal like Hugo Lloris. No, and he's not. He kind of leads by example, and obviously for the majority of the season he's had a a brilliant season mm. um, but I do agree that I think to be the best captain I think you need to be able to be in there you know affecting what is going on yeah. immediately around you and obviously as a goalkeeper you can't because you have to be removed from and it and it just doesn't feel like he is the captain of the club I'm not slagging off Hugo Lloris he's been no. quality for us all season I mean like yeah. he's conceded five goals against Tema Newcastle not yeah. ideal <laughs> but he has, has, he been, has he been brilliant he's, I think has it he? evens out over a season he's made as many absolutely vital saves that are as good as a goal as he has slight yeah. mistakes that you'd expect any goalkeeper to make. Everyone's human, no one's perfect. But it doesn't feel like he's the captain whenever no. you see them doing the, the I feel talks. Like, it feels like it's someone I else. I feel like it could be... It's Harry Kane, Eric Dyer, Harry Kane, like that, Eric Dyer, yeah, Moussa Dembele. I think they would be my three candidates yeah. for giving the captaincy. To... Yeah, maybe Jan, but maybe Jan's too chilled I, out. I think, I think Harry Kane. But it's, I think it's right. got to be Harry Kane. I think the only thing I say about Harry, like, I, I totally agree with everything, is that I just worry about it distracting him from his... Goal scoring. Yeah, it's the it's it's only it's only a minor concern because you you know you just don't know. But he's very young still. I don't want him to feel like he's carrying everything on his shoulders. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't mm. want him to suddenly be so focused on leading the team and being the captain that he then you know doesn't pay attention to his own game because he doesn't deserve that. So of course, I think that's my only worry and why I think maybe it might be better to have a captain in midfield. But you know. He's, yeah. shown, he's shown so far that he can step up to the plate for everything else, so, you know, why not that as Fair well? enough. And speaking of passion and character as we were, uh, Danny Rose. Oh. Felt like Danny Rose would have been good for that game against Newcastle. Don't get he it. plays a lot of games like it's a cup final. He puts his body on the line at all times, <laughs> yeah, and does. he's in people's faces. He's letting people know he's there. Something Ben Davies doesn't quite offer. Arguably, Ben Davies is a slightly more defensive player. Maybe that's what Potter's trying to do, but I didn't really understand... I thought, I thought he was injured. Yeah, I, I thought he picked up. Maybe a we don't know something, but I haven't well, seen anything about him being if, injured. If he got injury, then put straight out lied in the press conference. What did he say? Because he said that he had no injury concerns. The only one was Ben Slev, who we've known about. So it was just. Month. So it was a tactical. thing. just dropped him. Just dropped Disgrace. Him. Um, I could see the logic of it to begin with, because I think, yeah, maybe we're thinking we just need a draw. Let's keep it really tight at the back. Let's should not charge forward for too much. No, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. I don't agree with it. I'm saying I can see the logic of it. But as soon as that, you know, even midway through that first half, he should have been like, this is the wrong decision. Mm. When, you know, when, A, we're not being aggressive enough, and B, like, we're getting overrun anyway. Like, there's no point in this. Like, yeah. to have not brought Danny Rose on at any point during that match. Yeah, half time, yeah, you do look baffled, at it and go. Baffled, completely. And also, yeah, taking baffled. off Walker, as you said earlier, taking off Walker. Yeah, like, why would you take off your fastest you're... player at the back when you're being overrun? Yeah. Like, I, I understand the decision to switch to three at the back. You think, you know, you sod it, I'm going to go for it. I Maybe it's that. because Kyle Walker's potentially the worst at defending from those three. But he didn't, Kyle Walker was injured. Oh, Kyle Walker oh, was he? picked up an injury. In the sending off, yeah, he, he got injured by... But he carried on after the sending off, though, didn't he? Yeah, it? but he was limping by Mitrovic. See, I was going to say, I right. can't really... Can I just okay. say, in my defence, as about like 10 rows from the top of St. James's Park, literally can't tell if someone's limping. It's actually quite difficult at times to tell which player is which. So, so, uh, <laughs> oh, so it's a good game for you. You thought we were winning 5-1. Yeah, it was brilliant. No, um, so, so apologies, I didn't know that, that he was limping. I know the tackle was bad, but um, yeah, I didn't know that he was limping. So, okay, I still don't understand the decision not to bring Danny Rose on. Yeah, not to play Danny Rose at any point. <laughs> I think Danny Rose is more... To, uh, for me, Carl Walker is so hit and miss. He's, I, I don't really care about whether he comes on or not. Danny Rose, not starting Danny Rose. If that was tactical and there was no injury, that's just a disgrace. I don't yeah. know what he's doing. Play your best players that are available at all times. You've been doing it throughout the whole season, or, or let's say the last eight games, where we knew what our starting eleven was. Yeah, yeah, yeah Don't do that. Not not when there's an important last game of the season. Don't make a change and take a risk. Why do that? I don't mm. understand Pochettino's thinking sometimes. And you're mad. The last time I questioned his decision making is when we got battered by uh, Dortmund three 0 in the Europa. Yeah, he completely yeah, changed yeah, the whole yeah, yeah. team. Mm. And then who did we have on the weekend? Like Aston Villa. Yeah. We had like Aston Villa on the weekend. He did that. Yeah. That didn't make any sense to me. And no. we only lost 3-0. We all questioned that. We lost 5-1 to Newcastle. 10 men relegated. <laughs> we let him five. We only let him three against an amazing Dortmund team at yeah. their ground with, with a completely changed team. Then with more or less our first team. Yeah, minus three It's players, a disgrace. Yeah. Like, it's, there's, there's just no other way to fucking put it. It's a disgrace. And a lot of them were pretty silent on social media afterwards. Yeah. Uh, Cowards. 
I yeah. Howard's I, Harry Kane stepped up. Harry Kane. I mean, there's the a lot of one. lot of pro Harry Kane stuff in this video. The, Harry Kane. Well, there has to be. Harry Kane stepped up He's and said this was not good enough. He did two tweets. He did, did the classic tweets. one slash two at the end yeah. to let you know. Made all so, kinds of spelling mistakes. This wasn't good. Yeah, I know. This wasn't good enough. Uh, but you know, win the Champions League. At we'll, least, we'll do better next year. At least he had the balls to do it because I found it really, I mean, as if there wasn't enough reason to be miserable anyway. Like Everyone could talk about the pros and cons and the evils of whatever is social media, but bottom line is it's the only way that players can individually actually directly communicate with mm. their fans. And there's been a lot of great social media banter this season and like when things were going well, we've had a lot of, you know, the Together THFC and all this kind of stuff and it's been great. But the flip side of that is that when things don't go well or when they go as bloody badly as they went on Sunday is that you kind of have to come out and you have to say I'm sorry and I found it so unbelievably disappointing that after this whole season of you know the fans and players being together that none of them apart from Harry were able to front up for a whole day after the game yeah and say we're sorry, that was terrible. You didn't deserve that. So the it only slighted trickling, it started trickling through. Yeah, they now. all started doing it now. But, yeah. but I feel like, well, what, you, you, it felt like it showed a complete disregard for what the fans had to go through. I know what you're saying. Part of me thinks when that happened, I sort of avoided social media for a bit. It's just letting the dust settle, isn't it? Yeah, letting, but, letting but you also, you don't yeah. Wanna, you I don't sent wanna... out a tweet at night, full time. I, I sent out a tweet apologising. On behalf of the team <laughs> and on behalf of my behaviour. And that meant a lot to me, actually. Yeah. I sent a, I, I did that. So why can't everyone else do that? I don't understand. Well, Take some responsibility. Because they're furious. They don't want to do anything. They're under the spotlight. I'm going to say slightly more than you. Uh, <laughs> way, way more. Just they're under a lot more scrutiny. So if they do something when they're hot-headed and yeah. they're furious or, like or, they, or they're gutted, then, you know, maybe it's not going to come out right in the no, right and words. I they need to be diplomatic about it. They're in the media. I understand that, but, you know... So then why yeah. could Harry Kane do it? Why, why? Well, he could, but he didn't spell anything, right? Did a few, he? So. like, it's one thing to say, yeah, in the immediate aftermath, in the first couple of hours afterwards, you don't want to say something you regret. And I totally get it. Yeah. I only tweeted once, I said disgrace, and that was it, and then I stayed away because I knew otherwise I would end up saying something I would regret on social media. Mm. But Like what? The following morning, no, don't, like what? don't try it, Craig. Like what? I'm not saying, I'm not saying it. <laughs> okay, well, Harry Kane did win the Golden Boot. Is that a positive we can take from the season? Are you happy about that? Are you glad he won it? No, because we don't support Harry Kane. We support Spurs. Well, we do support Harry no, Kane. No, well, no, yeah, but you know what I mean, okay? That's his individual yeah. award. I can't bask in that. I can't have a parade and walk down and watch, oh, yeah, you go, go, that's... Harry no. Kane on a bus on his own. That's his own trophy. Yeah. Like, what, what, okay, congratulations, Harry Kane. Well done, you deserve it. 25 goals, cool. But what, how are we going to celebrate that? That's for him to celebrate. Yeah. That like, you can't go to other teams and be like, oh, yeah, my striker got a golden boot. So... We finished third. We had the high. That's even worse. We had the highest score in the league, and we finished third. Hmm. We had the, we scored the second most amount of goals after Manchester City. I don't even know if we got the best defence anymore. No, That's probably gone out the window. I'm not sure. It's probably Manchester <laughs> United. Like we lost everything. We lost almost I everything. Think, I think. I think we still got the best goal difference. Just about. We did. Have just about. Just we had about. the best goal difference. <laughs> yeah. That's even more embarrassing. Sorry, I'd rather goal. not have the best goal we difference lost because. A lot of it. Um, it's just, it's, just yeah. No. I, the, I feel sorry for Harry because. This has been, it's a, it is a massive achievement. Like, like No Englishman has done it since, I think it was 2000, Kevin Phillips. It's a huge yeah. achievement for him, and it's awful. You know, it's when he now looks... been massively, hang on, can I finish? Yeah, go ahead, sorry. That it's massively been overshadowed by what has been a fucking atrocious end of the season. Mm. And I feel for him. But yeah, I do agree that obviously it's not something that we can celebrate, but it doesn't mean we can't be proud of him for it. And I hope in the next few weeks when maybe we all start to get a little bit more perspective about what's happened this season, that, you know, he will rightly be kind of celebrated for it. I really do. When he goes into his house, I'm sure it's a huge mansion in Hertfordshire somewhere, tons of money. He'll have that golden boot on the shelf right there and it will always remind him of this season. He'll have to look at it and, and it will just remind him of this season where he had a fantastic season and it still wasn't enough. And it was the best season Spurs have ever had. Uh, what about the fact that all five of Spurs' Uh, players that we expected to get in the England squad did get in the England squad, including Harry Kane, who looks like he's going to lead the line potentially. Yeah. Uh, maybe along with Jamie Vardy, maybe not. Uh, but all five of them, we were slightly concerned with that leaked one that maybe Danny Rose and Kyle Walker were going to be on standby. Yeah, yeah. But they That's are true. in it. Are we happy about that? Do we think they can impress at the Euros or do you still think they're bottle jobs and they'll never do anything worthwhile? Well, well? do you know what my worry is? In all seriousness, like, I, 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 I'll be happy for them going, but Roy Hodgson's got a right job on his hands to pick him up. Mm. Because... Like you said, the perception is now is that 
we're massive bottle jobs. Especially we've with got Jack Wilshere no in that team, winding oh up. Oh my god! I mean, do you know what? Do you know what I don't understand about football these days? I just, just I, it doesn't even make sense. We've just lost five one, yeah, mm. and in the next day. On Sky Sports and everywhere, straight away it's, oh, England, the team's been picked. Like, we're supposed to just forget straight away what's happened and focus on England. Doesn't work like that. Like, how can I begin to think about England after what's just happened? Like, you want me to concentrate on my players playing for England now? Yeah, but you... And just brush that is, out the side. Like, all right, let's England but, now. But, but, but can I just say, that's you as a Spurs fan and we're all hurting right now. Obviously, the other, like, 19 clubs in the league won't give a shit about that. They care about England and the fact the Euros are like three and a half weeks away. Uh, do you know what it is? Uh, generally, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, <laughs> I just can't replicate anyway my passion for Spurs for England yeah. anyway, generally. Yeah. Well, so that's a whole it, different it, conversation. Like, I, but... So how they perform... Do you know what? You might speak to him about this because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not interested. Well, uh, I wish you all the best and also I wish you the best, Fabian Delph. Please totally just don't, don't get injured. Uh, okay, we well, we one thing that this end of season did prove is that we do lack a bit of depth. Uh, bit, however, yeah. three sources now have suggested that the Slomani deal to Spurs, uh, the striker, is on the cards. We're going to pay €30 million, Euros, which is his release clause. Portuguese papers say Spurs is his preferred destination over Atletico Madrid and over Leicester. What do you make of that? We need a striker, minimum one. Is Slomani good enough? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't but know. I mean, I'm a bit surprised. I don't want him. I want Michi. I'm a bit surprised because... Well, maybe the, we'll get both. Because all the indications were that Michi was going to be the one who was coming. Yeah. And, you know, PSG have said he's more than likely going to be leaving. Our talks have been well advanced with him. So whether that means there's a hitch in that deal or whether it means we're well, actually going to Well, I think PSG, these rumours... Uh, Doesn't he play for Marseille? Sorry. These rumours... Uh, <laughs> it's all French things are all the same. Yeah, all the same. Oh. These rumours have suggested that Slimani is definitely, is like, confirmed he's leaving as well. Uh... And his behaviour at the end of the, the, his last game suggested that as he like went, everyone else just went back into the tunnel. He went over to the fans to say goodbye. Who yeah. cares? <laughs> the only time I care about salami is in a sandwich. Other than that, I don't want to care about no fucking salami. You can fuck off. <laughs> okay, a fitting end to a pretty gassed, pretty hyped up Spurver. So let us know your thoughts. I mean, it's been a tough one. It has been a slog and an aggressive one. Uh, what do you make of the end of the season? I think we've already had most of your thoughts on the fan cams. Uh, what did you make of Danny Rose's absence? Was that a bit weird to you? Uh, is the social media silence justified or are they cowards? Are you happy with Harry Kane's golden boot or do we only support Spurs and not quite Harry Kane individually? Uh, do you make anything of the Spurs players being in the England squad? And would you like some salami in your sandwich? Let us know in the comments <laughs> below. Make sure to drop us a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, another regular edition, Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. Of course, this week it'll be about the Newcastle game. I just want to start by saying, on very few...